In this demonstration, we're going to show the use of the OLAP pivot function inside of Microsoft Excel. To start off with, one thing that's important to know about the OLAP pivot function is OLAP pivot is only available if you have the designer installed with Microsoft Excel. The OLAP pivot function will not function if you have Power Excel. This is the only difference between the functionality of the add-ins for Power Excel versus the functionality of the add-ins for the designer. Let's start by selecting OLAP pivot as our option from the designer. <clears throat> now that I have that configured, I'm going to recalculate and slice to Excel. For sake of this argument, I'm going to enter a data point into the cell that was incorrect before. You can see that that value was actually written back to Power OLAP. <clears throat> this functions exactly like the OLAP table and the OLAP read write functions. The OLAP pivot, when looked at, is very, very similar to what the OLAP table function does. <clears throat> However, the OLAP pivot provides many additional features that OLAP table does not. Some of the advantages and disadvantages. Using the OLAP table function, we were able to insert rows, insert columns, type in names, do that type of stuff in standard Excel functionality that allowed us to define what our report would be. Using the OLAP pivot, the area or the grid or the table that is populated with data is less dynamic from an Excel perspective. However, there are significantly more options that can be enabled through OLAP pivot to make it a much more powerful reporting tool. Let's take a further look at this by clicking on the function wizard with the OLAP table with the OLAP pivot function selected. In here, we can see all the parameters and their description of what they do for Power OLAP. Once again, the database is the first parameter. The cube is the second. The range is the, is the third parameter. What is the range? The range is the area that will be filled up with data. <clears throat> if we look at this, it's pointing to cells A8 through H25. These are the areas that will be populated with data. <clears throat> Zero rows. Zero rows is a constraint on the data. Zero rows indicates whether we should z display or not display rows that have zeros in them. In other words, if you look at the example down here, October, November, December are all zero values. If I set zero rows to one, then when I recalculate my slice, those rows will not appear in my report. Zero columns is the same concept along columns. Any columns that are all zeros will not display in the report if I have zero columns set to one. Next, I have a row constraint and a column constraint. Once again, very similar to the Power OLAP functionality. In Power OLAP, you can specify constraints along rows or columns. For example, a constraint could simply say that my USA numbers have to be greater than 1,000. If I were to specify a row constraint of USA greater than 1,000, then when I recalculated the slice, only the values or only the rows where the value for USA was greater than 1,000 would appear. All other rows would be removed from the report. Same thing with column constraints, however, using a row member as the value. Delete rows and delete columns. The delete rows and delete columns feature will actually use the Excel functionality of removing rows and columns from a report. I'll go into some further detail on that in a moment. For now, I'm going to set delete columns to 1, and then I can demonstrate it later. <clears throat> Once you've defined all those parameters, the next parameters are the members themselves along the dimensions. Much like the other functions in, in Excel, the order of the dimensions or the members in this function are very important. In other words, if you go into Power OLAP and you look at a default slice for the cube that you are working on, future your model, the order in the OLAP pivot function of the members must be identical to that of the default slice. In other words, you can see here that <clears throat> K1, which is my first parameter, is actual. And that's because my first dimension is actual versus budget. 
My second value is sales, and that's because my accounts is my second dimension, and so on and so on. First doing pages, then doing columns, then doing rows. I'm going to select OK to this dialog now that I've changed a couple parameters. I'm now going to recalculate the slice, and let's see what happened. First thing that you noticed is there are no more zero row values here. Any rows that currently had or previously had zeros are no longer available in this sheet. That's because we turned the option of constrain rows to one. So let's look at this option. Zero rows is set to one. If I had set other constraints, for instance, my row constraint of USA greater than 1000, other values would have been removed from this column as well. You can combine the zero rows or the zero columns with the row constraint or column constraint if you like. 